Okay, so 24 hours has gone by since the last clip. I spent my day outside in the wonderful sunshine. And it's another sunny day starting today, starting out today, but later it's supposed to cloud over. So, But here I am in here. Um, I've thought this through. At least I think I've thought this through. I have to remove this from the radio to work on it. I don't think there's any reasonable hope of a satisfactory result with it staying inside the radio here. I gotta get it out, I gotta take a much closer look at it. So it's not as daunting a task as it might be if it were a coil tucked further into the radio in some way. <coughs> Excuse me, th this one's kinda out in the open here. So there's two screws holding it. Let's take a look at that. Where are they? So the two screws are uh, right, right up in here. They are accessible. Good. Okay. Now, and then there's five wires coming to it. There's the two primary wires down here. That's really not a big problem at all. We'll just release them from the terminals here. But I have these three wires here. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> ah, boy. Um, my options here. Uh, one is. To try to desolder them off the terminals, but unfortunately they go up. They go up right under the switch here, so the, the terminals are way up, hidden away. And another option, which looks a lot more attractive to me, is to uh, is to cut the wires here, cut the three of them, and then join them back together later. And I really think that's the only approach I can take here. Um, if I try to desolder them up in here, I think that's going to become another disastrous undertaking so I don't want to do that so that means uh, now where, where should I cut these wires I can cut them really close to the form or I can cut them down a ways obviously down a ways just makes makes for trouble I, I suppose if I bring them and cut them right up here I'm gonna be in trouble obviously so it's really the only place is just right in the middle here in the obvious spot uh, there's a little bit of slack in these so I can get them to overlap a little bit. Oh yeah. So I can lap lap joint them or do something like that later. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these to get them out of the way. And it's a single, a double, and a double. I think what I'll do is nip this one first. Oh, I've done it! No going back now. I'll push this one down this way. So they can match later, easily. The single one is easy to match. It's a single one. It's the only single one. Okay, and then the double one in the middle will remain in the middle. Good. Now I've got to get these two wires off. I could nip them. Um, you know, there's an advantage to doing that. Not in there grinding around with a soldering iron and a pair of pliers. Just nip it away. These wires have a fair bit of slack on them. You just trim back a little bit of insulation and re solder them back on. New. Okay, nipping away because I think that's just the easy way to do it. Wow, just cutting all the wires off. Whew. Now, the number of times I've taken a coil out of a radio to fix it, I think amounts to zero. I really think I've never actually... I've repaired coils, but only a couple. I've done them right in the radio. There. Okay, all wires cut. Now, let's see about it. Getting up here. It's two large flatheads on locking nuts. <laughs> yep, that's it. All right. There it is. Okay, 
we're gonna need to want we're gonna want to take a close look at this coil now. You know what, let me get a few things set up so we can really closely examine it before we do anything with it. Okay, I have it under my uh, microscope here and we're gonna take a look and uh, see what we can see on this guy. So let's start with where we don't think there's problems and that's with this other coil. We're just gonna take a look at There is where the turns are brought inside the uh, inside. There's the other one. So these are these ones. Where's the end up here? There's the end up there. So this coil has uh, it's like two coils butted together with something inside there. Now I can't I can't see it, but. Um, all, all these wires here. Now that's interesting. There's one wire here. Here, let me get on camera here. So of the three leads, a little tricky doing it this way. Let's just switch here. Hold on tight while I focus this sky. These three wires go inside and then pop through to meet the coil. This other coil, the lead wires. Oh my, I think I see a broken wire again. Huh. Oh, never mind. Let's just go and look at what I'm looking at here. Like there's more problems here. That's what I think I'm seeing. Looks totally disrupted all through here. I think the wire's missing entirely right in this area. Look at the whole thing looks like it's blown away. Coating. Well, there's a bit of a, a reflective effect here when you're looking at this coating. From the lighting, right? There's a reflection right, right through here. It makes it look different. It's just a reflection. This is where the two wires come out. On either side of that little bit of tape they put there. You can see I hooked up to the one wire. And the other wire appears to be continuous to the terminal. Let's see. So this this wire, this upper wire, the one that's continuous heads off in the direction I'm pointing in now. It heads off on the top of the coil here, this way. Right, right in there, it seems, it seems like it's lost its insulation through a fair bit of its length. And then here's where I discovered it. It's burned off.
So is there another end to this? That uh, is it burned? Like it looked like it was just burned back. Is what it looked like burned. So this used to happen on power wires. Can you believe this? Under the streets of the city, a wire the size of your thumb shorting. Uh, just to picture this for a moment, because I mean this is sort of the same thing happening on a much much bigger scale here. But you have a, a cable with a conductor the size of your thumb inside an insulated cable, right? So this is what's under your streets, sometimes buried in the dirt, other times in in uh, in, in uh, conduit. In that, the ones I'm talking about were in conduit. And what could happen is uh, if a failure of the insulation, or for some reason, who knows why, the cable fails. So an arc forms between the conductor and the uh, shield or the sheath on the outside of the cable, which is usually got pretty good conductors and conductivity, so it can carry a fair bit of current. If that arc isn't enough to trigger the station breaker, then it persists. And this would happen on the electric system that I was involved with. There's certain circuits you could have a persistent fault that burn off uh, feet of cable. But I mean, this is no small thing happening. When this happens, there's vast amounts of power involved, copious amounts of smoke produced leaping out of manholes, or the ground begins to thunder if you're standing near where this is occurring uh, under the ground. Um, the thing is, it burns off the cable. So when you discover the fault, there's a foot or two of cable missing. It's just missing. So is that what's happening here? That's my question. What kind of fault, first of all, did this thing take? And I'm guessing it's one or the other. It's either a lightning strike or transferred energy from a nearby lightning strike. Obviously, it's not a direct lightning hit. Or it's an accidental contact of the external antenna onto something, and uh, something could be the, the radio itself somewhere. Somebody could have poked the antenna into the radio somewhere. I don't know. So here we are, starting here. So the idea of this piece here is not really intent on making that connection. This, this is supposed to be just going by, that broken piece of wire, going by on its way to that piece of tape I think the other end is right there. I think I could clean this off a little bit. When I look with my eyes on this, uh, it's at arm's length too. You'd have no idea what, what is going on here. You, looking at it here, I don't have much of an idea either right now. See if we can, yeah, that came off pretty easy. Okay. Now I'm looking for, you know, assuming the wire here just broke off. The other end is right here. Right here. Right. Maybe that's it there. Where is it? No chance that wire went up and tied to this terminal, is it? So this is the upper wire. Where does the upper wire go? The upper wire. So so the upper wire is here. Let's follow this all the way around. could be blown off under that tape. So I'm just trying to keep an eye on that first wire. See, look, it looks like the insulation is, uh, for, you know, burned off it or, or something. We're just going to come around and find the end of it. And there it is.
So, so is that really the terminal end? Okay, so if that is the terminal end and it's burned off and it really just peels up, it doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make sense at all because this is where they, they brought them out. They picked one of the two terminals to do this near. They picked this terminal and they brought the two wires out near this terminal. if I un unpeel that wire. I'm going to ruin, if there's any hope of fixing this coil, i got to be careful here. Is there any hope of fixing this coil? It could be uh, invisible breaks, you know, you just can't see them, they're just so tiny. I could be fixing stuff for a long time in here. Listen, so I've got a hole in the middle we haven't even looked at yet. And we've got a free end that I've soldered onto that lead. Looks I tried anyway. You have a, a free end here that I cannot find a matching end for it. Is there some wild chance that this is a two-part coil and part of it where I thought there was a break is where it dips inside and something's going on inside? I, I, I don't think so. Let's see if we can see anything here. Oh, there is something going on there. Let me change cameras here. Just a little focus. Just bear with me a second here. Okay, so so I would say the three. Well, there's something going on here. Okay, so I didn't see this little bit here, uh, this this piece right here, which is coming from inside. It's coming out. Right there. I believe it's right, it's on the big coil. They couldn't do this with the fine wire. So that's a grounding point because the wire, the wire comes out and around, makes it to this terminal here. So that, that and that of course is, is bolted into the, onto the chassis with this. Look, they've uh, they put a, uh, a tabby thing on here. Make sure when you put the coil in, you can't put it in backwards. Well, what to do here? Uh, let's compare those those wires again. The, uh, the wire. I, I'm going to rewind this. That's where we're going with it. Here's my wire. Let's see how it compares. A heavier dimension, like it's a bigger wire, not by much. Oh, that looks really good, actually. Let me get it right up beside it. So I think I've got the wire to do it. Got the wire to do it, and then I have to count the number of turns on here. I think that's pretty easy to do. Sixteen. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna let go of this thing so it's not moving. There, that's better. Okay, I'm counting them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, uh, 20 or 21? 
through there. 20 or 21. But I have to lay them all nicely flat like this. And this is the kind of thing that's been wound on a, on a jig, of course. It's not, not wound by a guy with just standing at a bench. And is there somewhere I can leave this and wind a new coil, like in this space here, or down here, and leave, leave this one? And why would I try winding a new one, which presents all kinds of new problems, if there's still a chance I can fix this one? I should try to fix this one. Let's go look at this whole situation in it here. Where is that? Where is that? Where is the hole? The supposed hole. That I saw it earlier. Hey. Where's the hole? Pretty convincing look at a hole there the last time. That's why I took this out. That lead wire uh, coming from the terminal. Where's that lead wire going? Oh, okay, I think I'm being fooled by uh, thinking I see it going across here, but that, that's just the optical illusion, I think. Yeah, it's going right under here, under the tape. Wow, I should probably lift that tape. <coughs> <coughs> Let's put it this way. <coughs> there's a chance, there's a, a hole in the wire under the tape, which I'm never going to find by looking. What happened to the black hole? The black hole. Well, that was a pretty solid observation I thought I made. I was poking at it and everything. Okay, so I remember it as being... Let's see, this is in the radio like this. I think I remember it being right in this area here. Let's switch cameras again. Maybe I'll see it better with the other camera. Misery's happened right in here. That's me. That's me trying to fix the hole. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I was throwing solder all over it. That's that's where the hole is. That's where the hole is. Right, right where I messed it all up here. It was my Hail Mary attempt at fixing it. Maybe I did fix it. I filled it full of solder. I think I know where it is. Okay, so you know what? Maybe I fixed this. <laughs> Who knows, right? It's a Hail Mary on the solder. But with this other open wire, it's obvious that, you know, I've got to sort out. I've got to sort out I mean, what to do about this. So I think I'm seeing the rest of the wire right there. Let's look again. The end of the wire is right there. Like it just blew right. There's no missing wire. That whole story about the disappearing uh, cable. I can't seem to pick it out of there. Oh, I think I got it. I got something. And a little, just a little strip of. Insulation or wax there. Yeah, that's just a piece of 
piece of junk. That's not the wire. Now, how, how could a wire, like, just disappear? Uh, going back to power cables and huge fault, regardless of the burn off, if the, if the cable circuit protection worked properly, which means the power short, the power fault in the power cable, only lasts about six, seven cycles of energy, a fraction of a second. That fraction of a second, vast amounts of power are released at the point of the arc, and large amounts of copper disappear. Large amounts being uh, How much copper disappears in one of those explosions? An amount equivalent to this, which is missing. It's just gouged out of the copper conductor and vaporized. So yeah, vaporizing can happen. Now I mean, that's a totally different scale from this. <laughs> that's for sure. We're going from one extreme to the other. Could you vaporize off a whole bunch of wire? I just I think it would be really obvious that something had happened all along here. It doesn't make sense to me that you would vaporize a pie. I mean, the whole coil would, in one huge lightning bolt conflagration. Well, why else could I be getting wrong about this, really? I mean, how can this wire be here? Because I still haven't managed to pick out the other end of it. That's all. That's all that's happening. Well, there's something right there. Now that that felt like it. I got a sharper needle. I got a sharper needle. I must. This isn't. This isn't. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go find a sharper needle here. Okay, got a whole bunch of needles now. Who's got the sharpest point? I think the smallest needle has the sharpest point. Let's try this guy. Something, something happened there. I think I got two wires. interesting thing is it, it burned open so close to this terminal here so I wonder if there was an arc across why why would this one would be burned right off because it was a whole bunch of wire missing here and then this is burned open here so if I close this gap that might that might be it this coil might might be good if I can close the gap here oh my gosh that's that's pretty challenging in itself is there any other burned open wires right there doesn't look like it well that's the challenge. Join those two wires. So you can see the ball of copper on this wire. That's that's what happened to the copper. It melted and whooshed back to here. They probably didn't make that particular sound though. Okay, I have to ponder this for a little bit before I uh, get going on it. How exactly to do that? So just, just here's what I'm going away thinking about. I take some double-sided tape, lay it over the defective coil. 
eliminating the coil. Cut, cut the wire free here. Eliminate the coil. Double-sided tape over top of it to make a new place to put a new coil. I then take my, my wire, wind a new 20, 21 turn coil, do it on top of the double-sided tape so the coil as I wind it is held onto the tape so it won't spring out like a like a bird's nest, it won't bird nest on me. Get that done and somehow connect the ends and you know I think that will probably give me the best result. That's kind of a much more of a, a controlled or engineered way of of approaching this uh, problem as opposed to uh, trying to fix it. Boy, uh, I think if I try to fix this coil, I am just going to have a headache after a headache. So we're going to go away and think about that tape idea and new new a new coil. How critical is the 20 turns anyway? Is it really very critical? Yeah, let's, I'm going to continue talking a little bit more. How critical is it that this be 20 turns? This coil, the one I'm concerned about, is not actually connected to the radio directly. This coil is. This coil's impedance is hooked right into the radio. This one, not so much. Yeah, there's a mutual effect between these two coils for sure. But this one is probably not nearly as critical. Uh, in terms of its impedance. So probably I just put 20 turns of my wire in there and we're probably going to get a good result out of that. That's what I'm thinking now. So I'm very much encouraged to go ahead and do this. N not that I have a lot of options here. Okay, another 24 hours has gone by. And what I've got in front of me now are the bits and pieces I think I need to do a rewinding of this coil. And that's what we're going to try to do. So first I'm going to take off this temporary um, extension that I put on here. I'm going to take it off with the soldering iron. So here's my plan. See if this really works out. Try and get everything centered up here. That's out of the way. Now, here's the plan. Now, I'm not going to spin this with the motor. That's not my intention here at all. My intention is to turn it by hand. Oops, that's not going to work. Twenty times like that. Hmm. Better off this way. Well, I haven't got any better ideas, so let's carry on here. Now, here's my double-sided tape. OK, 
Okay, so there's the double sided tape. Disappeared here. I'm going to play out enough wire I can make the coil, what I believe is enough wire to make the coil, and I'll wind it back up on here. That way I'll know for sure I'm snag free. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so I think I have a good piece of copper here now. Clean it off once again. There's lots showing here now. Again, I apologize for the uh, focus, but I have to start over. So we're, we're going for this connection point up here. Okay. There's lots of bare copper there already. Okay, I'll break the wire if I'm not careful. And cut it. 
on here. Ooh, there we go. That's a commitment now. Tiniest, tiniest connection, we're done. Contact here. Everybody hold their breath. There we go. Ah, son of a gun. How do you like that? Short circuit. Beautiful. 200 ohms. Two, two ohms. Yep, two ohms. That sounds about right to me. Success, I think. I think that's success. Let's take a really good close look at it. Though. See if we really did get it well. Just bear with me a second here. Wow. You see the solder didn't adhere to anywhere. I didn't scrape it, but you can see where I scraped it. It's got solder on it. Barely, it's barely. That needs another soldering. How about the other side? Ah, it's not much better. Of course, you're seeing a lot of the wire where I didn't remove the coating, and the wire where I did is buried in the solder, probably. Should I fill with this more, or, or I mean, it's working? I really hate that little tidbit sticking up there. See if I can bury that. Uh, see, I didn't scrape the very, very end either. Uh, maybe it'll leave well enough alone for now. It, it, it may look bad, but it tests okay. You know, I'm going to leave it because uh, you know, what would I achieve in fiddling with it? Fiddle with it and then take another test and it'll look the same and read the same. I don't think I'm going to get anywhere. Okie dokie. It's, it's time for it to go back. Before I do that, I want to, while it's out here, I want to clean these wire edges here, uh, ends here. Just try the same technique. Just need to get the very tip. So this will take a little while to get this done on all these wires. And I have to do the other ends in the radio too. Uh, these ones got to be a little better than the... Uh, good, that's going to work. So I'll just work away at that. Fantastic. Soon we'll have it back in the radio.
least these are heavier wires here. I don't have much risk of breaking them or cutting through, really. Now you could try this in different ways. You can use sandpaper, and we'd stay away from trying to burn it off as much as possible. Closer look at these now and see if I've succeeded at all in doing this. Well, other than looking coppery. It's hard to tell, but I think they're pretty clean actually. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think that's going to work. So now it's a question of, uh, let's see, I think I would bolt in the coil. back in. Now, you know what I should have done? I should have trimmed these wires before I stuck this coil in. It's awkward now. That's what I've done. Again, we just need a little wee bit here. I get this tool in here. bolted in the coil. radio today again. That's where I want to get to. That's not the right one. It's the heavy duty pliers here. Got that. Got that around there. 
our soldering iron still hot. Let's use it. Next. Sometimes what happens is I look up at my monitor, all the cameras are shown on the monitor and what I'll do is I'll look at the camera that's of interest and I won't realize that's the camera that's not being sent out on the video or being recorded. And I make this mistake with some regularity. So uh, that's the case. There we are, antenna hooked up. I have to run and throw the antenna switch so while the radio is warming up I will do that. Butter in. Now, there really isn't much risk of a bad result here. Just keep an eye on the dim lights. Switch on. Perfect. I'm off to throw an antenna switch. AM band. She's definitely receiving. But what I did should not have affected this band. There we go. So that'll be uh, 9, 11, 15 megahertz. Let's start there. Come on, baby. Sounds good. I'm not hearing anything. It's unaligned, remember? Nobody home there. Make sure the antennas. Yeah, it's definitely working. Okay, we'll come down a band. 11 megacycles uh, right around lunchtime. Could find something here. Ha ha ha. That's the first thing this radio's received on short wave. Radio Marti, so that's the American uh, uh, broadcast station, propaganda station for Cuba. Or is it really for Florida? Hmm. <laughs> Everybody discussed that. 
Is Radio Marti really propaganda for Floridians? Great. So, that's fantastic. We've got the radio fixed. Now we're ready to get back to the alignment process and uh, see if we can't, can't really bring this guy to life. But that was pretty good right there. I like that. Hey, what else can we do? Yeah, speaker sounds nice. Fantastic. And inside this container is the glass. So we're all set to finish this guy right up. Okay, that's it for now. Coil fixed, short wave happening, alignment next, back in the cabinet, glass panel mounted, dial checked, we're done. That's, that's what's left. Fantastic. So that took me three days to do that little project there. <laughs> it only took you about an hour to watch it. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you on the next, uh, next video.